with authority. Welcome to another edition of the With Authority Quarantine Podcast. Larry Beal at home, Chris Alvarez at home, and our special guest, He's the first guest ever to make two appearances on this podcast. Yeah. It is Al, the linebacker, Evan Weaver, who is, uh, like the rest of us, quarantined at home. You're in Spokane, aren't you? Yeah, Spokane, Washington right now. So how's it going there? I know uh, Washington State has been hit really hard uh, with the virus. Uh, what are you thinking about when you go about your day-to-day -day activities right now? Uh, honestly, uh, I'm just waking up, working out, and then trying to figure out something to do with the rest of my day. So, actually, uh, I just built a putting green in my parents' backyard because I got pretty bored. So, that was kind of something to do. But now, now I got to figure something else out. Evan, this is such a, a such a unique time. You're you're getting ready for the NFL draft, and and you got to do the combine. But now everything has kind of changed. Like, how are you navigating these waters in unprecedented times that you can't even ask somebody like, how do you deal with this? Because no one's dealt with this. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm getting my interviews done over FaceTime and stuff with coaches and asking them whatever they might know about anything. And uh, it seems like none of them really know what's going on either. So, uh, uh, you know, I, th I think we're all just kind of in the same boat and uh, adapt and survive, I guess. What kind of workouts are you able to do? Because you obviously can't go down to the gym. You couldn't go to the gym in Berkeley because that was closed down. So. Are you doing a lot of body weight workouts or have you found a place where you can uh, at your garage or, or wherever? What, what's what's your workout routine like and how has it been altered by this situation? Yeah, so I mean it's been it's been kind of crazy, but uh thankfully um, I'm able to go into my garage. We have a we have a little setup there, uh get get some weights done in there and then uh and then I can go to like the local field, like uh like local public field that's turf and so I can I'm able to run around and stuff, even though it's not the nicest weather here right now. But uh, you know, be able to get something done at least. Did you did you automatically go home and talk to your quarterback Chase Garbers or your former quarterback, your teammate, uh, and he went down to Newport? Did everybody kind of just leave and go to their respective homes? Yeah. So I was actually I was actually training in San Diego. So uh, I, I I haven't been in Berkeley since uh, since the bowl game actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, so so it's been a while, and then I was gonna go back. Uh, to Berkeley uh, early March, right right after, like about a week after uh, the combine. Okay. And then I started getting these texts, hey, pro day might be canceled, pro day might be canceled. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. And then so I uh, decided to stay here and not buy a ticket, thankfully, because they went into quarantine, I think two weeks before we did, so. <laughs> wow. How has this altered your, your preparation? Because the NFL just said, uh, today that full speed ahead on the draft for late April, although it's going to be a, a totally different experience than what we're used to seeing with, uh, you know, Las Vegas was supposed to be the scene and thousands of people there and said it'll be in a TV studio and uh, just a very different overall experience for everybody. Uh, where are, I guess you're going to be, <laughs> you're probably going to be right where you are right now in front of that painting in Spokane because uh, you can't go anywhere, right? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, they shut. They shut every down. Everything down here. Gyms. Uh, uh, you, even the border. You can't go across without uh, papers. So it's kind of it's, it's kind of ridiculous right now. So can't even go over to Idaho. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna be sitting here in my living room and uh, waiting to get a phone call. I guess. Are there is any Idaho? The, is Idaho the happening spot? Is Idaho the happening spot where you'd go uh, from from your house? Well, I mean, r r right now anything is, uh, <laughs> but uh, just uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I I know it's got a little bit there. They got a they they got Coeur d'Alene Lake, which is pretty nice to go to. I mean, not this time of year, but you know, take a few buddies of a boat, take a boat out, do something. But can't even get over there right now, so it's uh, it's a different time for sure. Evan, are you if you're able to tell us are, what teams maybe seem to be the most interested in you? Is if that's a fair question, then you don't have to answer. But I'm I'm just curious if you can answer that question. No, he has. Yeah, to I mean a few a few <laughs> teams that I've done like, uh, like FaceTime interviews with and stuff. Uh, the Saints, Cardinals, Raiders. Um, who else? We have Bengals, um, Texans, and Falcons. So it's a good amount. <laughs> yeah, not bad. <laughs> Exciting. Uh, Are you sort of recruiting the Raiders? That's what I had read in one article uh, because it seemed like there was some chemistry there with you and I know uh, John Gruden. 
chemistry. Uh, never met him before, but uh, you know, if if I become a writer, I'd you know, I'd, I'd I'd represent the silver and black pretty well. So, you're his kind of guy, a Gruden grinder. Yeah. Where, you know, one of those guys who's the, the first one in the gym and the last one to leave, always studying that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, you, you'd be like the prototype of a Gruden grinder. I don't know if you see yourself that way. Yeah, I mean, I, de I definitely see myself as you know a hardworking guy that uh, you know is gonna is gonna put in the extra time. Uh, something I've always done, and uh, if, if if I end up going there, I'm sure I'd fit in uh, pretty well. And um, I, I just want to go somewhere where I can uh, prove myself and be able to. Uh, uh, maybe uh, get some playing time early because I, I feel like once I get on the field, they're not going to want to take me off. So, Evan, we, we talked uh, right around, I think, in November, Casey went to Berkeley and saw you. We talked about big game and, and, uh, and then you had the bowl game. What were your last couple of, of games like at Cal to finish strong? Because you were one of those guys that I could tell your frustration when you went in that losing streak in the middle of the season. Like you, were, you took it very hard as a leader. Uh, to end your season and your career at Cal on a high note and then going into the pro ranks, how, how, how key was that and how uh, happy you're about it? the way things ended up. I mean, it was, it was awesome. Uh, just a blessing to be able to, you know, go to Stanford and beat Stanford. Uh, Cause I think it, it was almost a decade since we beat mm -hmm. them. And uh, then, then to uh, be able to finish it off with a bowl win uh, in the Bay area, no better, no better place to be that almost a home game for us. And, uh, uh, just, uh, you know, just uh, being able to, to lead that program uh, better than when I came in, uh, you know, coming in at five and seven teams and then, uh, finishing out with eight wins is huge, um, and I'm really excited to actually see what they do this year because they could really compete for a Pac-12 championship, I believe, as long as they prepare themselves and uh, are able to get some workouts in uh, right now. You know, that's really crucial uh, to be able to steal days like this. I want to talk about your combine experience because when I saw you, uh, your body, obviously, you, you worked hard to change your physique. I think you're down 10 or 11 pounds, or at least you were at that point. And I thought you looked great. And then I, I read a bunch of the draft reports just are so comical to me. Because <laughs> anybody that has watched you play, I mean, what was it, like 181 tackles last year, which is just absurd on a really good defense. It wasn't like you guys were giving up 50 a game and there was nobody else tackling. You guys had a really good defense. It just happened to be that uh, you see the ball and go get it. But there was one report that said you were like a fringe prospect. You're such a dominant player when you're on the football field. I just wonder when you read these things, whether it motivates you more or, or how you react to it. Because anybody that flips on the tape just looks and it's, it's impossible not to find you flying at, at the football and whoever's got it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I feel like I can play football better than anybody in the nation. And, uh, you know, uh, th there's going to be a lot of bias out there, you know, uh, for certain things that I can't control, um, just, just the way that the game is. And uh, I, can't, I can't put words into people's mouth. All I can go is go out and prove it every single week that I'm better than everybody else. And, uh, you know, I mean, when, I, when you leave the nation by 30 tackles, uh, they're going to uh, – it's it, – if I was Luke Keekley, I mean, they, they, they'd probably say something a little different, but, um, you know, everybody's going to hate and, um, I'm not, I'm not really, really worried about uh, what other people have to say, but I, I do find it kind of comical sometimes and, uh, also uh, find some uh, areas, uh, to improve from, from where they, where they think I need to. So I'm not, I'm not really worried about that stuff. Never really have been. I'm just worried about getting in the right fit and I get in the right fit. Um, I'm sure I'll play for a long time. Speaking of fit, Evan, this might be a little off the wall, but as a guy who's watched the NFL draft for years, where are you going to have your draft party or where are you going to find out? And then also, do you have all 32 teams and hats and shirts ready and then you just pick one and you return them all? How does that whole work? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I definitely don't have all 32 teams, hats, and everything <laughs> ready, so uh, we'll see about that. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to have it here, here at my house, uh, probably probably just with some family and friends. Uh, don't don't want to have too many people because this whole – virus deal right now but um yeah no it'll be it, it'll, it'll be pretty just pretty much close family and that type of deal i read a story about your combine experience where one team asked you to stare at a wall it was like a, a judge of how competitive you are that you know how long could you stare at this wall and i i guess according to the article your time was about two minutes can you take us through and recap what that was what that bizarre experience was like 
Yeah, I mean, it was uh, that, that that was definitely one of the weirder parts of the combine for me because uh, the, the first thing the first thing they do before they even introduce themselves or anything, or I introduce myself, they're like, "How competitive are you?" And I'm like, uh, I, "I think I'm more competitive than anybody in the nation." Like that, and that type of deal. I always want to win, and then they're like, "All right, stare at this wall and don't blink. I'm gonna time you." And then so I get up to about two, two and a half minutes, and he's like, "All right, you're good. I believe you." And then and then by the, by that point, I couldn't even see anymore. I was just kind of. Just, just so my eyes were so dry, um, just <laughs> it was it was kind of ridiculous. But did, was, did anyone? That, did you ask anyone about uh, combine crazy questions like that? Like Larry, I, I've never heard of that. You've heard of some off the wall things, but like staring at a wall. Did you ask anybody, Evan, about stuff like that to get prepared for uh, potentially staring at a wall for two and a half minutes? Uh no. Um, <laughs> I mean, as 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 a little kid, you kind of do like staring contests, you know, and that type of deal. But uh, I think the last time I actually had my eyes open for that long was probably when I was eight years old doing a staring contest. So, uh, other <laughs> other than that, uh, de definitely uh, no way to prepare for that one. I know you led the nation in tackles. Would you say you're the leading starer in the country as well? <laughs> oh man, I mean, I. I I I'd be up there. I'd, I'd definitely be up there. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it against myself, and I wouldn't bet against myself. So, okay, Evan, good to know. Go ahead, Larry. No, no, I just uh, you know if we get to the point here without any sports where we're starting to bet on really weird things, I want to know where we should you know should I be drafting you on my fantasy staring team? <laughs> oh yeah, I mean I think I think I'm a first round pick on the fantasy staring team for sure. No <laughs> okay. doubt about it. Make number one overall. Wow, well, let's, let's not get crazy, okay? Let's not, you know, come on. Let's, let's get control of ourselves here. Uh, besides staring, Evan, what, I, I ask everybody this. What kind of hobbies are you picking up? Obviously, your, your routine and everything has changed. So what, uh, what are you doing now for fun? Or what, what have you maybe refound? Well, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was going to be golf until they decided to shut down all the golf courses. Uh, so instead, I decided to uh, build a pretty nice uh, little putting green out back with a uh, built a bunker and everything. Uh, wow. uh, bought some sand, filled it out, and uh, took me about four days, but got it done. And it's pretty, it's pretty good size. Got six holes on it too. So what? It's not a, it's not, it's not too bad. You got to put a video. I don't know if I, maybe I missed this, but you definitely have to put a video on Twitter. We got to see this. Oh yeah, no doubt. Never mind, never oh, mind. Twitter, well. just send it to us directly. I want to oh, see. Yeah, actually, yeah, I got yeah, you. Do that. Yeah, we want the exclusive. Did anybody, any of your relatives, do like a video of the making of the putting green, like a time lapse thing that we could show? Uh, I, I have like, I have like a few videos, but nothing, nothing that that's quite like a time lapse type of deal. Okay. Yeah. Well, you, you like can, a, you can text him to me or email him to me. That'd be cool. We'll we'll figure a way to put that in. That's cool. Definitely. Were you like an engineering major? At, like, how did you learn how to build a putting green? Uh, I watched a two-minute YouTube video. And then, oh, wow. and then I uh, kind of, kind of figured it out from there, you know, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> Two I mean, minutes? <laughs> Two minutes, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it was like six minutes long, and I'm like, all right, I know how to do it. Just go buy some turf, you know, get a, get a plate compactor, um, get some mortar, get some concrete, uh, get some bricks, and we're good to go. I mean, Evan, obviously you're going to have a football career. Maybe this is a potential uh, career building uh, backyard putting green. Six holes, I mean, that's pretty impressive. You might have a business – opportunity after or some sort of side hustle i mean you know i i i wouldn't mind doing it as long as uh, it's not my main uh, my main money uh sure. source of money so yeah <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit more about your combine experience because you came on the podcast uh, before you went and i think you ran a 476 of uh, i had actually I, I should apologize i have extensive notes on, on all these things that I wanted to touch on, and they're on the phone that's recording this. Uh. Zoom. <laughs> so I'm trying to go from memory, Evan. Uh, I know it was 476. Uh, what happened with the bench? Because like, you're, you're kind of jacked now. I have 15 reps. Ashton Davis, the same yeah. thing in 14. I, I mean, I don't really want to crush you here. Uh, no, no, no. What, 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 I mean, what not to make – not to make excuses or anything, but uh, if there's if there's film of it, so on rep three, uh, so what what it has is it is it's built with two pegs, so it has a two pegs on bottom and then two pegs on the top, and the pegs on the top go back. I was taught to you know align myself over the over the bar, and but that goes back about three inches more, so I was kind of planning on not having the pegs there. Hit the peg on rep three, hmm. hit the peg on reps uh, rep four, 
and then have to have to uh, keep keep going. You know, already lost my momentum, hit the peg on rep eight, and then so I'm holding the bar up for about 30, 35 seconds, and I scoop down the bench oh. about six inches, like legs off the ground, and then hit seven more. And I'm like, all right, I was going for 24, 25, so kind of pissed me wow. off a little bit. Why didn't they let you do it again? The, the other numbers the linebackers put up at the combine. Why didn't they let you do it again? That was obviously just sort of a weird deal. Well, apparently uh, I would have had to drop drop the bar on myself uh, before like five reps. So that's what that's what I should have done. I should have just went like this and dropped it on my face or something. You know, it's <laughs> not like it's not like there's a lot there that can that can really hurt it. So, well, I think what like what Larry said as well, and we talked about this before the combine is is some guys are football players. It doesn't matter all these numbers, but honestly, at the end of the day. They didn't have you in pads, and you turn on all the years of tape. You're a, you're a football player. I think that shows whether you drop a bench press on your face or you build a putting green. I mean, you, you can play football. Even. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to a gym so I can put out a video. Of, of that, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do, put out a video of me benching so I can actually, like, you know, be like, okay, yeah, he's not a 15 bench guy. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but, uh, you know, I'm – uh, it's it it's more for my moral compass than anything else. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Chris is a 15 bench guy, oh, so we we can't have. What? what, what oh, weight? Now we're really weight. Yeah, all right. All well, right. That, no, that's with 25 <laughs> pounds. So that's <laughs> only 25. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what what is your real routine? We we touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but like, do you have a personal trainer? I mean, you could work out with a personal trainer doing body weight stuff, but are you? Well, I don't want to get you in trouble if you're sneaking into a gym that's got real equipment, but uh, sort of navigate the gap here for me. No, so basically basically what I'm doing is I'm working out five days a week, uh, waking up at 6.30, uh, uh, getting to the uh, field, uh, so like the park I was telling you about, around 7, um, get, getting about uh, 45 to an hour and of running and speed, uh, kind of change of direction type of deal, and then uh, and then I come back home and uh, – uh, uh, get getting a lift in and uh, exos kind of sent us a little a little uh, thing that, that we can work on and then i've added some stuff to it and uh just yeah just trying to stay in shape and stay in the best shape possible uh for you know rookie minicamp wow do you do you envision what this world is going to look like i mean no one can really know but uh you obviously have the draft is the next big thing i mean you're not going to have a chance to do pro day how upset are you that you don't have a chance to, to do pro day at cal and get the show off again yeah, I mean it sucks, uh, especially because I wanted to to redo the bench to go back to that because that, <laughs> that 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 one stuck in my mind. I mean, I, I I hit 15 in high school, so that's what that's what that's what really hurts. But uh, uh, man, I uh, yeah, just uh, just um, yeah, not not being able to prove myself, but uh, also uh, I think about the guys I played with, uh, like Ash and Davis, uh, not being able to run his 40. Uh, Jalen not being able to you know do a few things. Uh, Travion Beck uh, he didn't get invited to the combine, not being able to show himself out. So uh, at least it, at least I, I I was able to do stuff at the combine. And uh, then I think about those guys who like I, I think I think have a pretty good shot, but uh, it's going to be a little harder for them now. We also talk. We've been talking a lot about physical stuff, but as we know, especially in these interviews and these combines and all these things. A lot of it's mental and how you interview. Did you feel that you've interviewed well? And, and besides the staring contest, like, are you happy with how you performed in the interview where they get to know Evan Weaver, the man? Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I've I've never been been worried with interviews or anything like that. You know, I'm pretty I'm pretty easy going uh, once you get to know me and and like I'll will tell you whatever you want to know. I'm not a liar or anything. So, uh, and then uh, and then with like drawn down plays, I mean, it's pretty simple when you go to Cal. You know, you kind of you. you we pride ourselves on being smarter than about 110% of the country. So, uh, you know, when, when, when you're drawn up defenses, uh, it's not, it's not really that difficult, especially when you got, uh, when you got coaches, uh, saying, uh, drop, drop, drop your, your number one defense. And then they're all like, okay, all these guys drew a man. I mean, how hard is it to drop a man coverage? You know, you just line them up over the guys. And then, and then here, here we are drawn in half quarters, half man simulated pressure. They're like, Oh, well, there you go. That's what we're looking for, considering, uh, you know, you actually need to know a playbook and have been a linebacker. But, you know, who, who, who am I to, to try to boast myself like that? Like I said, hey, all I have to do is put on the tape uh, and you, you go where the ball is, uh, seek and destroy. 
Have you gotten any inclination either from your agents or from the scouts as to where you might be drafted? Absolutely no clue right now. Hopefully in the next week or two, I'll know, but uh, like within about two or three teams, but um, yeah, right, right now it's kind of, it's kind of weird because everybody's trying to get their interviews in, trying to do all this sorts of stuff. And there's not really, there's not really a whole lot that, no, we, we can figure out because there's no um, facility visits or anything like that. Okay. Um, I think we should wrap it up uh, in an appropriate fashion. You're, you're our first uh, time double guest, uh, two time. Uh, we have no shirt. There's the, <laughs> uh, right, what we can, we'll make one. We'll make one. Um, <laughs> but I thought we would finish. Um, we should have the staring contest right now. And let's just see. Wow. I mean, are, are you ready? Do you, I'm ready. Are you capable? And we'll just see who I, – I have a feeling Chris is going to tap out first. What right. are we staring we'll at? Are we staring at our screens? What, we stare whatever you want to. This is a terrible I, whatever. podcast. At audio only, this is terrible. But we can oh. do it. I mean, it's fine. We can keep – no, we can keep talking. But okay, we just keep have talking. to keep staring, don't you think? Yeah, Evan, is this, how, how are you doing, All right, Evan? tell me when. All right. Well, well, I'm going to time it. In. Hold on, I'm going to time it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Evan, I had already started. Now this right, is Larry, like your bench press. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> You're starting. All right. This is going to be riveting radio, audio. Um, oh, my God. Evan, do, just, you have, do you have a, a dream sack, either a current guy or a guy in the past that you would love to like? I got that guy. Man, a current guy or guy in the past uh, that, that I've tackled? Uh-huh. Or no, I mean, it could be anybody. If you go to the NFL, I want to sack this person. Or if in the past, I want to sack this guy. Oh, man. Anybody. Let me think. <laughs> I mean, got to go with Tom Brady. I mean, he's the GOAT, you know, if I could. But uh, a guy that I have sacked, uh, I would say I would say the, uh, the Texas quarterback uh, my freshman year. I uh, forget who it was, but it was my first stat ever. So, I mean, yeah. and uh, be able to. And they were, I think, number eight in the country at home. So that was a uh, that was perfect. Nice. We all we all have been blinking, by the way. So this really uh, yeah, turned into yeah. nothing. Yeah. No, I, I looked yeah. out of my phone. It's been a minute. That's really good. That's really good. Uh, yeah, I think we'd have to throw the results of this out and, and do it again, um, <laughs> maybe with uh, better monitoring. Yeah, yeah. We'll, but, we'll we'll have to do it in person. Yeah. Yeah, I can't Thank wait to get back together in person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we can actually see other humans. Uh, <laughs> outside of zoom but thanks so much for your time again and uh, we look forward to the draft in a few weeks and, and i hope you go really high and uh, just blow people away once you get out on the football field i appreciate it thank you guys with authority